So what's the topic today? History of the circus, right? Battle of the Bulge. Ooh, oh, waffles, right? I've always wanted to know the history of waffles, right? Infectious diseases. Sounds a bit gimmicky considering. What? Educational. You mean people watch this to learn something? Welcome to A Brief History of the Past. I'm Caelan Burrows and today we're exploring the history of infectious diseases. Now, I know what you all are thinking, right? Caelan, how could you be a studio filming with a crew when you should be physically distancing yourself to prevent the spreading of COVID-19? Well, look, if it makes you all feel better, just pretend that I'm filming this at home in front of a green screen all by me onesies, right? Only pretending to talk to an off-camera producer that's not really here. I don't think they'll go for it. Well, we tried. Normally when I'm talking history, we put photos up here to correspond with the topic. However, since infectious diseases often have devastating and grotesque results, today we're just going to put up silly photos to make fun of those diseases. Like disease shaming. Actually, it's a lot like that. One of the earliest known infectious diseases is smallpox. Now while the origins of smallpox are unknown, there were descriptions of a smallpox-like disease from medical writings in ancient India, China and Egypt between 1500 and 1122 BCE. There was also evidence of the disease found in mummies from that same time period. Now see? See? That's why Imhotep was so angry, right? He was probably covered in smallpox. <laughs> it is believed that smallpox was brought to India by Egyptian traders and it would eventually be brought to Japan from China where it would be particularly devastating. Between 735 and 737, it is believed that smallpox killed one third of the Japanese population. During the Middle Ages, smallpox would make its way to Europe, and by the 16th century, it would become the predominant cause of mortality in much of the world. Wow, with statistics like that, they should have called it big pox, am I right? <laughs> you get it? You get it because it wasn't small at all. <laughs> what? This, it's not funny. It's not funny. I'm being told it's not funny. In the 9th century, Persian physician Raziz was the first to differentiate smallpox from measles and chickenpox in his book on the subject. I mean, I suppose identification is important to stop it from spreading. Oi! This one's got smallpox! Okay, hang, hang on, hang on. Alright, let, 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 let's just say I do have a pox, right? If I do, it's not the small one, right? I don't even hang around other people, right? Just pigs and chickens. So if I do have a pox, it's either a pig pox or a chicken pox, and it's well documented that neither are fatal. Is that true? Uh, I don't know. I thought I made them both up. I don't know. I'll consult the book. Europeans would be the ones to bring smallpox to the Americas in the 15th century, starting with Mexico, where the native population had no developed immunity to the disease, and it decimated their population. This was key in the Spanish conquest of the Aztecs and the Incas. Like the world's first accidental bioweapon. And cool, bro. Similarly, when the English landed on the coast of North America, they inadvertently spread smallpox to the Native Americans, where the fatality rates were as high as 80 to 90 percent. Wow. Look, smallpox is a right tosser. <laughs> While smallpox would be globally eradicated by 1979, it was a long road to get there. However, there were documented smallpox inoculations as early as the 1500s in China. Powdered smallpox scabs would be blown up the noses of the healthy, developing a mild case of the disease, but making them immune to it after. What? So, got some powdered smallpox scabs here, I'm gonna blow them up your nose, right? Wait, 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 wait. did you just say powdered smallpox scabs? Yeah, I picked them and ground them myself. You ready for a blow? You know what, I just remembered, uh, I had a blow yesterday, so I'm actually good. Uh, I'm just gonna go live like a hermit in the mountains. Another early disease was known as typhus which comes from a Greek word meaning hazy. It's thought that typhus was the cause of the plague of Athens during the second year of the Peloponnesian War. It killed between 75,000 and 100,000 people and caused major problems for law and religion. People stopped fearing the law and started spending money like there was no tomorrow because, well, frankly, they felt like there wasn't one. 
typical. During this time of outbreak, it is important to obey the law and focus on a brighter tomorrow. <laughs> Heck with that. I had a fever this morning, so I blew all my drachmas on women and wine. Oh yeah, and the law can suck it. Plague also caused religious doubt as it struck without regard for a person's piety towards the gods. This was a time when people thought the gods were responsible for every part of their lives, and they stopped believing when they felt abandoned. You know, it's sad, really. What they didn't realise was that at the same time, the gods had come down with a case of mono. What? Stop! <sighs> okay, fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. Typhus outbreaks were frequent in prisons during the 16th through the 19th century, and during war times due to filth and pestilence being rampant, allowing lice, the carriers of the disease, to spread easily. At one point in Britain, more prisoners were dying from what was dubbed prison fever than from public executions. For your crimes, you shall serve three years in Newgate Prison. Yeah, about that. Uh, look, strange request, uh, but could I just opt for the death penalty? And, uh, you know, if we could just do it now, that would be preferential. Typhus epidemics would break out during the English Civil War, the Thirty Years' War, the Napoleonic Wars, the American Civil War, and World Wars I and II, sometimes devastating the armies more than the war itself. In fact, when Napoleon's army retreated from Moscow in 1812, more soldiers died from typhus than were killed by Russian soldiers. You know, they still don't have a cure for typhus, but it seems to me that if we just stopped having wars, it would have a leg to stand on. Every word of what you just said was wrong. When do we get to the monkey virus? No, not HIV, the, the other one, the, the one that killed Kevin Spacey. Yeah, uh, what was it? Uh, Motaba! Motaba, that's the one. Yeah, when do we get to that one? What? What do you mean it's not real? It's from a movie. Wait, so you're saying that Kevin Spacey still ain't paid for his crimes? I suppose next you're going to tell me that Renee and Dustin didn't fall back in love after saving Cedar Creek. You silly, sentimental son of a... Well, we don't have time to cover every infectious disease out there. We have saved the oldest and most lethal for last. Tuberculosis has been found in animal remains from 17,000 years ago and in human remains from around 4,000 BCE. In the past, it was commonly called consumption due to the weight loss that accompanied the disease. <laughs> well, sure, it kills you, but at least you fit in your favorite pair of jeans again near the end, am I right? Are you crazy? Is that your problem? It wasn't until 1820 that tuberculosis, or TB for short, was given its name by German pathologist Johann Schonlein and classified as a single disease. In fact, there was a time when tuberculosis deaths were associated with vampires. TB is spread through the air, so when a member of a family would die from it, other infected members would slowly be consumed as well, leading people to think that the original person who died was sucking life from the rest of the family. <laughs> My cousin sucks life from his family, but he ain't got TB. Jerry's still out on whether he's a vampire or not. I know where the bastard sleeps. German microbiologist Robert Koch identified the bacteria that causes TB in 1882, but an immunization wouldn't be developed until 1906 by Albert Comet and Camille Gurin, and even then, it wouldn't be used on humans until 1921. They didn't blow ground TB lung up no one's nose, did they? Certainly not. As of today, one quarter of the world's population is believed to be infected with TB, though the number of new cases has decreased each year since the year 2000. What? We can't end on that. That's depressing. Why don't we talk about some of the fun diseases? What do you mean there's no fun diseases? What about, what about the rockin' pneumonia or the boogie-woogie flu? Or the, the, one, the one that makes you laugh uncontrollably, right? Or what about the one that makes you speak in foreign accents for no reason? You know, I might have that one. There you have it, everyone. A brief history of infectious diseases. In all seriousness, I hope everyone out there stays safe and healthy. Let me know what sort of history topics you'd like to see me discuss in future videos in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you all in the future. Oh, now that you've been on camera, you think you'd do it again? Nah, they don't want to see this ugly mug. You're the good looking one. <laughs> do you really think so? No, but I'm contractually obligated to say it. Oh. Why do I have to do it?
I don't care if I hurt his feeling. You know what? Forget it. Forget it. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when more Brief History of the Past videos go up. And be sure to check out some of the other videos we have on the channel. You might find something else that you enjoy. There you go. Done. Are you happy now? Let me do it again without the attitude. I'm done. I'm done.